Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Conversations with series by the Education Committee at European Economics Association. For today's episode, we have Professor Stefania Paredes Fuentes, an Associate Professor of Economics and Deputy Director of Undergraduate Studies at the University of Warwick. Thank you for joining us today, Stefania. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. So starting with the round of introductions, um, could you briefly introduce yourself, uh, the subjects you teach, your research interests, and a fun fact about yourself, please? Okay, so, well, as you mentioned, I'm a social professor at the University of Warwick. I, I teach mostly macroeconomics at all levels, so from first year till uh, third year. And uh, so, and my research interests are in the area of macroeconomics uh, or institutional economics and development. Uh, in addition, I'm also in the executive board meeting of the Economics Network and I'm diversity champion for the Royal Economic Society. Uh, a fun fact about myself is like, that seems uh, usually an easy question, but no, uh, let me think. Yes, I, when I was very young, very, very young. Friend, me and my friend decided to, uh, to have a band and just a music band. We didn't have any musical background at all, but we wrote two songs. We sent it to the radios and the radios asked us to send a cassette. And that's how old I am, they still like music cassettes. But then we requested our parents to buy us an electro guitar and some drums and they say, no way. So sometimes when things are like, I'm not particularly happy or something, say, mom, what would have happened if you actually bought me my, my drums and electric guitar? Maybe I would be famous now. I doubt it because I'm very bad at music, but that was, uh, that was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um... So moving on, um, we have seen your research work on economics education and pedagogy with specific works on teaching macroeconomics and rethinking economics lectures for current economic students. Could you maybe share your top two research findings of how to make economics teaching more inclusive? Yes, a lot of this research is still ongoing and I'm working with various projects with various colleagues on these. But if I have to share two top findings uh, is first try to make, and this is very obvious in a way, and things is things that we have been talking for, uh, talking for quite a long time, but I don't think we are doing enough to make economics more relevant to students in a way. So we really need to, to think about what students find interesting about economics and try to uh, match their expectations. There is a reason why students decided to come to do economics. And we need just to find out the, find those reasons and think about how we can uh, help students to, to meet their objectives. Uh, so this really helps also to develop a, a sense of belonging. If you think about economics is trying very hard to attract a more diverse cohort of students. We know that there is not a lot of diversity in economics. So, but once we attract different cohort of students, we really need to make sure that this diversity is interested in what we are teaching, how we are teaching, and they feel engaged with the subject. But if we just look at our own backgrounds and how we learned economics, but without engaging students into the, their learning, I don't think we are doing very much in the students' favor in order for them to, to feel that uh, engaged with the subject. So something very simple, perhaps, so kind of this uh, seems less ab abstract, is to ask the students. At the beginning of my lectures, I generally send a survey, quick questions. Why are you doing this module? Especially if they are optional modules, what's the reasons? What do you want to achieve with this module? And of course, a lot of the answers, I want to get a 70, I want to get a first class degree, but there are also students who develop a little bit more these answers, explaining why, for instance, they are doing money and banking. So this really helped me to shape how I explain. I, I don't change the topics, but help me to try to link the topics that I am teaching to what the students are expecting from, from the module. And I think that helps to make the module a little bit more engaging. And a second, uh, and perhaps the most important, and one of the things I'm really working on at the moment is just change assessment methods. If your modules are, or what you are teaching, or the way you assess your students is still based on, still consists on 
one high stake assessment, which is usually a final year exam, there is much more that you can do to help students. We know there is plenty of literature that explains why exams are not the best way to evaluate the student's engagement with the learning outcomes. But in economics, at least, we have been very resistant to bring change. I hope the pandemic helped with that, but it is important that we change assessments. So if there is something that you can already do for next academic year, change assessment methods. And I think that's gonna help a lot to rethink how you teach things and also engage the students with the subject. Yeah, that sounds great. And as students ourselves, we completely agree with those. Um, so this year, due to the current circumstances, teaching had to take place virtually. How did you adapt your teaching methods to the no online environment? And what were some advantages and disadvantages of this new format? So there are a few things. I, I changed, well, I actually, a lot of changes because moving from the face-to-face -to, -face to the online format requires require of time, energy, and extra work. So one of the things is I thought, and this comes from, from, from previous research I have done, I thought, of the, I thought of the teaching material as a communication means with the students. If the student, think about it, if uh, I teach 400 students or more in a classroom, Sometimes the only way that I have to communicate with students, if the students, for instance, don't come to office hours, so I don't see them, is through my lecture material. That's the only communication that I have with that. So I thought about how I can structure my teaching material in a way that is good communication means for students. And this wasn't just about the content, of course, very important, trying to make the content as accessible and clear as possible, but also how they should engage with the material. So for instance, all the material was presented on weekly basis. So, and hopefully there was enough information on how they, so you should watch this video. Once you have watched this video, you have to watch this other video, then you are gonna be able to answer these questions and you are gonna be able to answer the questions for this problem set. For the asynchronous lecture, you should be able to answer these questions and you should have come prepared by watching the videos in advance. So all these things just seems almost very obvious in a way, but it, constant communication matters. And so many times I felt I was repeating myself so many times and perhaps some students might have felt the same, but I also know that many students say, oh, I forgot that. In fact, another thing that I did is that every week I send them like a reminder of this week in macroeconomics, what you have to do. And that went beyond uh, just watch the videos or things. It's things also like, remember that this week you need to meet in your groups and decide which project you are gonna be working on. Uh, remember that this week you have a submission for this. And uh, remember that this week you have to uh, upload this material. So this kind of thing. So, a list of if they wanted to pick out what they have to do that week to engage with macroeconomics, they could do that. And every week I would set up similar emails for all of them uh, to send. And of course, another thing that I did this year was to change assessment methods. I tried to work within the university regulations that we had, but a key thing was that I introduced what I call, I developed this new way of assessment and I introduced to the students what I call assessment activities. Uh, these was activities that were designed, thought and were marked in a way that whether students engage or not, these were done on certain intervals depending on the module, but this to allow students to feel as students they had to do, always have to do something. And so engage with the material regularly. And I think that helped a, a, a lot. And in fact, I got great feedback from, uh, from students from the engagement activities because it made them feel they could engage with the module. 
Great. Um, so you mentioned the importance of having assessments other than exams. So what advice um, would you give to someone wishing to implement these different types of assessment methods and the challenges and opportunities which come across by using such assessment methods? So, uh, so may, a lot of the challenges come from, uh, to be honest, the bureaucracy that there is behind changing a assessment. So for instance, depending on, on your institution, sometimes you have to rethink assessment methods almost one year in advance uh, for them to be approved for something. And sometimes, you know, if you start with, uh, given how busy you are during uh, the academic year, if you start rethinking about your module over the summer for the new academic year, you are already late for changing assessments. So I would say start early look at what are the, uh, the regulations within your university, but do it. Try also not to add. So when we have to rethink assessments, we usually think about the usual suspects, exam, uh, coursework, write an essay, and some group work or group presentations. Those are the typical things. And so, but actually we can look beyond these things. And I think uh, works by colleagues and the employability skills that matter once the students leave have been very helpful to shape how I create assessments. So think about a lot of students, for instance, are gonna be writing policy reports or policy briefs if they work in government once they leave, right? A university. So why you don't start asking students to do the same, but have worked in small groups, provide them a scenario in which they have to create, make a decision, a policy decision, and create a, a policy response for a, a policy that has been introduced. So really, you need to think out, outside of the usual suspects of exam and essay writing. Also, because there are some students that through the education system, they will come more prepared for certain assessments and orders. So there are some students that have been almost trained to take exams, the students have been almost trained to, make, to write essays. So these students tend to be from the same background and they might do better, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these students have engaged more with the learning outcomes of the module than other students. So it is important that we introduce flexibility within the assessments in a way that students can bring their own background, their own experiences with the education system and engage with the assessment using this background and these experiences as a, something positive, as an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Because in many cases, if a student have not been trained to take assess, uh, exams, for instance, that's a disadvantage for them. And I don't think we should disadvantage the students only for lack of training in training and education system that perhaps was different or they face it in a different way. So for instance, a lot of the things that I introduce in, a, in my assessments is I let a students choose which country they want to focus on. So I said, well, if we are look, looking at this specific policy, uh, if you want to choose a country that is not the UK, but because you are more familiar with how that country works, feel free to, to choose a different country. As long as you make the analysis, that really doesn't matter which country you focus on. Uh, with the introduction of engagement activities, for instance, I allow the students a lot of flexibility. So they were given various topics, that mirrored what uh, the topics that we were looking at the lectures. But for instance, they say, actually, I want to create a video on these. Or someone say, you know, I would rather have a podcast. Or you know what, I'd rather write uh, an article, a news article. And so students could bring their strengths. Some are better at making videos, some are may, uh, better at uh, uh, setting up a podcast. So they could bring their strengths, their creativity, as they said, into the assessment which make it more engaging for them. And yeah, they were much more keen into, into doing it. And the quality of the work that they presented was much higher than when I say, you know, uh, write an essay 2000 words on this topic. It was definitely much higher quality. Yeah, that sounds all great. And uh, with that, we... Uh have come to an end for this interview. Um, thank you so much for taking out the time uh, for this interview. And it was really great speaking to you um, on your research. Thank you very much. Thank you all.
，拜拜。